Hey guys, good morning. Let's get started. Just give me one second. Uh, yeah, good to see stronger participation right now. So yesterday, I think we had done uh, chapter zero, your ACC, the uses of ACC, use cases, kaha pe, where we use, what kind of things. I think uh, it should rather be clear, at least the base of it. And of course, application of ACC will become much more coherent and easier as we keep moving forwards. Because like we had discussed, there'll be certain chapters uh, which are relatively more back-ended, which will be utilized when you're delving into ACC in a deeper way. But just to give you a very quick recap that within ACC, the biggest, uh, let's just say confusion that stacks up among a lot of individuals is bifurcation between specifying the problem and developing the solution. And the only way to ensure that you do not make a mistake over here is to ensure up developing the solution is something that you have to remember, uh, you know, beforehand that there are only three, four set of things that comes within developing the solution. Everything else will come as a part of specifying the problem, which includes identification of risks in certain situations, uh, which can include identification of objectives in certain situations. So question ka solution, wherever you have to brainstorm, the question ka brainstorming part is basically identifying the problem. So we had a look at a couple of questions yesterday, and I think that should give you some bit of idea about what's the thin light of difference between the two. Now, just to set the pace, and given that a lot of new folks are today uh, uh, over here as well, uh, just reiterating the fact that uh, there will be two, three things that you'll have to remember, uh, maybe from the next week going forwards. Right now, what I'll be doing is I'm going to be showing you guys questions. I'm going to be showing you guys, uh, you know, whatever is the requirement within the book, within this PPT material guiding you guys through. But from the next class onwards, you will be given certain assignments, certain questions that you will have to look at before you come into this particular uh, session. And post the class is done, I'll again be giving you certain assignments. The assignments are also, you know, in the in, in the mode of being prepared because I, there's also this bifurcation of assignment as to which one is easier and which ones are uh, relatively more difficult and which ones you will be able to crack as you kind of move ahead. So all of those things, while it is being done uh, without any hindrance to your current, uh, you know, syllabus, we are kind of moving ahead. And uh, just ensure that, you know, you, you guys are doing what has been at least given to you as a pre-assignment and start making out notes just like we had discussed the last class, right? So within this, one more thing which I want to reiterate is that initial chapters are severely neglected by a lot of folks, including myself when I was studying. I felt that, you know, these chapters seem to be very easy uh, or I won't say easy. Easy is probably a wrong word. I won't call these chapters easy. These chapters seem... Number one, too boring, and number two, too theoretical. As I like that, it's very boring and theoretical, monotonous. So, and of course, as you kind of move ahead, chapters will be a lot, but it will get slightly more interesting as compared to what you will find over here. So, these are very technical and theoretical in that sense. Having said that, I'm going to be dealing with a question right now in front of you, right after, uh, uh, right before we get into into the next uh, chapter, and I'll show you guys the importance of these chapters as well which you would otherwise feel should be totally neglected because you'll feel that, okay, even if it comes in the exam, I'll definitely be able to crack it. You won't unless you are very well prepared for all of these chapters as well. So don't like, ne ne don't neglect the first five, which is zero to four uh, in this particular situation, zero, one, two, three, four. Although these chapters might look very technical, boring, theoretical, or easy, whatever is the synonym that you want to use it for, that's your call. But don't neglect them no matter what your thought process is. They are equally important and probably slightly more important in today's scenario because the institute knows that you will find them boring, right? And the question ideology that exists today within the question paper is much more different as compared to what it used to be pre-2019, if I may say, right? So all of those things definitely need to be at the back of your mind as we're kind of moving ahead. So ACC ka basic knowledge, like we discussed, common theory is that you can apply it to any question. But we have to reach a point by the end of our session wherein you should very well be aware of this thing that I should not apply ACC to any question no matter what. You have to be super prepared for every question. Solving any question using ACC just to get 50% of the marks is not what we are trying to achieve uh, as a part of these sessions. So going forward, uh, next couple of chapters, I'll just quickly scheme through so that you guys get a feeler that it's very boring. And then I'm going to show you guys the questions 
so that you guys have a pre- proper understanding that you know these are technical and these are a must haves uh, which which you guys definitely need to uh, focus on uh, as we kind of moving ahead so actual advice within this there are a few things first thing that it kind of discusses is uh, you know most of the clients for actuaries and uh, what what those what those potential clients are and what are the key considerations that you should have while you are dealing with those particular clients so a prospective question might ask you that okay this is the background situation that has been provided to you based on this background situations identify who the possible stakeholders can be right and those stakeholders are actually very much aligned to the clients that you have so whenever as an you as an actuary are dealing with any particular client say suppose you are in pricing actuary at any particular gi company uh right agar aap if you are if you are a pricing actually maybe your employer is probably the biggest client for you because there's an employee employee relationship but other than your employer there are so many other parties who get impacted as a result of any advice that you give if you advise on increasing the premium by 5% there's a whole plethora of events there's a whole domino effect that impacts a lot of folks other than your employer it impacts your policy holder it impacts it impacts your prospective policy holders it can impact your shareholders because it impacts your overall revenues and of course your profitability it impacts the board of directors it impacts the insurance company and in a way it impacts the insurance industry as well because of because of your action someone else might be taking a counter action to that when you increase the premium others might also follow the suit and increase their premiums when you increase the premiums other might others might not increase in fact they might slightly decrease the premium in order to enhance the sales so in a way you have to be able to understand that you advising on any particular thing is not just confined to the end user of that it impacts a lot of people within the chain and identification of those people is number 1 identification of different set of conflicts that arises as a result of your advice is number 2 and how can you minimize those particular conflicts is usually the uh, crux of the question that you have to address ki because of you giving a particular advice there can be a certain set of or cohort of people who have difference of opinions as as you may say and uh, for all of those practical uh, reasons what is the you know uh, let's just put it this way how does it impact different people in the ecosystem is something that you have to be aware of right so as you can see there are so many clients listed out in front of you there can be policy holder there can be pol- prospective policy holder member of benefit of the scheme and their dependents if you are advising any particular pension scheme there can be your employers like we discussed if you have an employer employee relationship you doing anything definitely employ uh, definitely impacts your employer it can impact the insurance company and within this just see the subtlety with which they have done insurance company board of directors insurance company shareholders these are like two separate entities over here then you have within insurance company creditors as well trustees of the benefit scheme so benefit scheme may if i just go back it impacts members their dependents and also the trustees uh, who oversee that particular uh, scheme and we'll be getting into a uh, benefit scheme uh, in, in in the next few chapters but i just hope that you have a background understanding of you know what trustees versus sponsors versus members versus dependents of those members you just need to uh, just know these terms for now then you have employees of course there are and if you are advising banks it can be banks it can be sponsors of a capital project auditors insurance companies so many things which have been listed down over here next thing if you see towards the left hand side there's like different types of actual adv- actual advice it can be factual indicative and recommendations you have to ensure that you understand the difference between these three so whenever it is factual it has to be based on research of facts for example you are advising it based on this you know research that you have done on all the legal legislations uh, which is out there and based on all the research you are providing with this particular uh, Uh, advice in that case it becomes factual indicative is basically where you are giving an opinion without fully investigating the issues which is like whenever you are being asked a oral question okay should i or should i not buy an insurance premium and then you are saying that okay you should buy it but there are these considerations let me tell you these considerations at least for now and then let me do some more background research and get back to you with a thorough uh, or let's just say comprehensive answer or conclusive answer as to whether or not you should go ahead with it so it probably starts with an idea wherein it is indicative in nature to begin with and then potentially it becomes factual 
recommendation is on a different line wherein you know you are researching uh, research and model forecast uh, alternative weighted recommendations made consistent with requirement uh, work normally peer reviewed so this is basically most of the actual work that we know on an as is basis you know wherein you are running certain models you are uh, uh, identifying what the premium should be you are putting a set of assumptions you are doing some stress tests you are doing some scenario and sensitivity analysis you are getting it reviewed by a lot of peers to identify that if if there is any shortfall in the model so those are basically your day in day out work of usual actuaries mostly as practitioners or mostly as employees so that is basically a recommendation kind of a thing but factual and indicative these are to very let's just say easier ones to crack and then there is recommendation although no direct question has uh, i've i've seen i haven't really seen a lot of direct questions come from over here but using them as a part of your answer can obviously strengthen the integrity of your answers in in that case that okay this kind of recommendations can be provided some indicative this thing can be done and then the actually can do some factual research and then come back to it uh, uh that kind of a thing right now next thing over here is considerations when you're giving actual advice and this is what you guys have to delve deeper into and we'll look at a few questions after this so that you guys can understand because right now i'm just skimming through the topics so it says you have to set out alternative solutions and implication for clients and other stakeholders set out and explain implication of each alternative solution whether the solution is recommended or not so whenever you are giving any particular advice to the client you have to identify that okay sir when we are doing this there are these five things that we should be aware of instead of going through route a there are possibilities of going through route b c d and e within these routes if we go through this these are the shortcomings these are the strengtheners now because of these you know strengtheners and weakeners i believe that it is more recommended that you go through route a so that is what they expect out of you whenever you are advised or whenever you are asked to give an actual advice that you thoroughly investigate all of these pointers within those pointers you also have to identify different stakeholders within the ecosystem just like we discussed on top how does it impact different stakeholders whenever you are taking any particular course of action that is thing number 1 and thing number 2 is that whenever you are taking you know all of these course of action there can be certain conflict of interest which can arise between a lot of folks right so the conflict of interest that you guys might be aware of you know what what you what you would have learned in cb1 that kind of has a cascading effect over here but over here it needs to be much more thought out uh wahan pe aapko scenario was something which is provided to you and you were supposed to evaluate here you have to provide scenarios wherein you believe there can be potential conflict of interest you might be asked a question wherein they'll ask you okay who are the okay what can be the potential conflict of interest between these four people and you have to come up with examples so questions on conflict of interest is also something that has been asked of late and you need to be prepared for those as well and last it says consider whether other professional should be involved in giving the advice in certain situations this is also a part of the answer which you have to think through if at all you believe that you need the help of a chartered accountant or a risk analyst or something like that you need to speak up and ensure that a proper team and other professional guidance whatever it is that you need is a part of your answer whenever you are giving any particular actual advice right and there are a few key considerations that you should definitely have whenever you are given a particular assignment or before you pick up any particular assignment right and let's just say if you are asked to do any particular thing you have to ensure that you are following all the actual standards and all the professional code of conduct and professional within the professional uh, framework you need to ensure that you have sufficient technical knowledge you need to ensure that you have sufficient background knowledge you need to ensure that you have sufficient experience in that field you need to ensure that you have sufficient domain expertise you need to ensure that you are consistently ethical when you are doing it you need to ensure that you are following all the tasks so all of these things definitely need to come out of your answer whenever it is on whenever it focuses on actual advice ki you ensure that you you know you are meeting all of these checklists before you end up enrolling yourself for any particular uh, actual uh, 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 for any particular you know actual advice that you are supposed to be giving uh within this there are a lot of tasks isko matlab in one liners they have given it to you but no question has usually come from from tasks so this is something that we can ignore uh what are the aims and implication the aim is basically and it, it is to ensure that you know there is sufficient transparency as of assumption uh, everything is relevant everything is uh let's just say ethical in in whatever it is being done so to ensure that all the stakeholders within the ecosystem are given all the consider due consideration everything ends up being very professional as well as ethical is what the ultimate requirement of 
all of these standards are so that you're not uh, let's just say not meeting the requirements or let's just say you're compromising on the needs and needs and interests of one of the parties in order to give advice to the other that is something here that you have to essentially try to avoid as you're kind of moving uh, and giving any particular actual advice so these seemingly very generic things actually end up having a lot of weightage in your examination so like i just said i've just quickly skimmed through it you also need i will go through a materiality actual quality framework we'll look at a question as well but before that let me just show you a quick example of a very recent question that had come that should give you some incremental insight as to what are the things that you need to be prepared for uh in this chapter and you know the in the initial chapters because while it might seem that okay sir ye to bahut easy hai ki matlab you have to be ethical you have to be this thing you have to look at a lot of stakeholders if there is any conflict of interest you need to meet to mitigate that all of those things are very basic i don't want to spend a lot of time trying to just theoretically advise you or theoretically give you this background information so let's delve deeper into a couple of questions to give you an idea as to what kind of question can come and trust me right now it might not seem very difficult but when you are in an exam situation when you are you know just downloading that particular question paper and this kind of a question comes and you are in a time pressure it won't seem as easy at that particular point of time as it might seem to you right now so be prepared for that as well let me just quickly show you this uh, question paper from april 2023 So this was April twenty three diet paper two. Uh, to those who are uninitiated, paper one is usually more theoretical. There are like seven, eight, sometimes ten. I think last term was ten or nine or ten odd questions. Paper two would usually have a couple of uh, question sets. Both are uh, usually of your case study format, and within those case studies, they'll ask you a certain set of questions over here. So a lot of people, like I've said, that all of these topics, which seem to be pretty generic in nature, if you just look at it, the first question, I'll, and of course, we'll go through the background information because without that, of course, there's no answering this question. But if you look at it, just the things that we discussed yesterday and maybe today in the last fifteen to twenty minutes, you will find a significant weightage coming out of that uh, within the initial questions. And the biggest mistake that a lot of people make is. they don't refer to the background work in these chapters they think that acha to bahut basic question hai and they write things absolutely in their own words and unnecessarily start losing marks out of that so you have to be as technical as you possibly can when you are giving these particular answers right so the first question without the background information it says list the stakeholders who will be a part of this transportation review next it says so transportation review ke i don't know we'll look at that but they said list down all the stakeholders will be a part of this thing so just listing down the stakeholders can potentially give you 6 marks theek hai perfect next it says describe the three potential conflict of interest that could arise between the stakeholders that you have identified in part 1 so as soon as you have identified the stakeholders you have to identify what are the three potential conflict of interest that can arise between these stakeholders that we have just identified this is question number 2 another three so that totals up sums up nine marks next question it says set out the factors including any further investigations okay so this is factors to begin with next it says including any further investigations that an actually would need to consider before agreeing to undertake this review so before you and this there are few things that change the entire question over here first thing let me just underline the stress word over here is factor next thing it says is further investigation and the most important one is before agreeing yes so these three things change the entire crux and ask of the question the reason why i'm sharing this with you is what we discussed in the last 20 minutes can potentially have 16 marks worth of weightage and as you can keep reading the book it will not prepare you enough as to uh, it will not prepare you enough you know so that you can tackle these questions uh, during the examination so the best way to go about these is to ensure that you know you guys are uh, preparing for these questions based on the examination scenario itself let me just share it on a full screen basis i think a lot of area is unnecessarily getting wasted right now 
just give me one second I think this might be better. Do let me know if you guys find that this is smaller. I can zoom in. Uh, but yeah, let's just quickly read. Have a have a look at the question. If you guys want, we can go through it together. I would rather recommend that you know you guys have a very quick read at it. It might look very easy, prima facie, but trust me, it it can be challenging to certain individuals. Uh, so I'll just give you maybe a couple of minutes to go through the background information. Maybe just you know three minutes because I don't think you'll get more than that uh, uh, in an exam scenario. Just maybe quickly read up on what is provided over here, and this is what I've been telling that in the classes going forward, I'll be giving the, you all of these things before the start of the uh, 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 session so that you know we don't have to spend time on all of these things during the sessions so that you can come prepared with this. Uh, right now, if you are facing any difficulty with the zoom in, zoom out, just let me know. More than happy to do that. I'll. Your time starts now. I'll give you three, four minutes just to have a quick read at it. If you guys want to take a crack at it, more than happy. You can take a take, take a, a crack at it. At least maybe start listing down the list stakeholders because there isn't a lot that we can do about that, right? So just maybe read up. Try to think of what the stakeholders would be. If you find background information to be a little daunting. uh we'll discuss it together as well so i'll give you guys it's 10:51 i'll give you guys 4 minutes and uh, post that we'll uh, go through the question together
Hey guys, uh, are you guys and are you guys done with the preliminary reading of it? Yeah, you can let me know in the chat box. Yes, no, whatever it is, it'll be it'll be easier for me if you know I I can get some feedback. All right, perfect. So, kya laga dekh ke matlab based on your prelim reading, uh, wh- wh- what was your initial reaction? What did you feel? Was it a lot of information? Uh, what any any feedback that you guys want to share? Because questions will be very similar to this, and it's a it's a very let's just say. F- Favorite topic, if I may say, of both the institutes, climate in that sense, because April twenty three, yes, this is April twenty three. This was climate. The next term again, they gave another climate ka question, which was even more difficult than this. this. Is relatively more on the easier side. That was relatively more challenging as compared to this. And the mark allocation over there was fifty six as compared to fifty over here. Uh, last term, of course, they didn't give. So maybe this term they might or might not give because climate change every you know every with recent frequency they kind of keep coming up with questions on this. and there are a certain thought processes that they want you guys to have within questions like these and as we're kind of moving ahead you will see that there there will be certain best practices that we'll learn in order to ensure that you know we can address and tackle these questions in a in a much better way but ultimately and you'll you'll get to realize this as we look at so many questions while we are moving ahead challenge cp1 ka sirf do hai there are only two challenges within cp1 nothing else is a challenge book is right there in front of you to whoever says that the syllabus being huge is a challenge is not has not actually done his homework correctly syllabus being huge will be the last part of your challenge by the time we are done with the syllabus there will be two challenges only by then one will be of course the fact that you are under constant time pressure uh, because you know there are so many questions over here and uh, you know there are like eight questions in part 1 and there will be another seven eight nine questions in part 2 so of course time pressure is is definitely one of the most challenging aspects within this and the second will be understanding the questions most of the people do not score well in cp1 because they do not understand the ask of the questions they feel that just because you have gone through the entire book you will be you will be able to get done with the questions it's it's easier to move ahead and all of that sadly that's not the case the questions over here are much more practically framed but they are not seeking just a practical answer it has to be a mix of both just because this question looks very practical that what are the factors that you as an actuary will think before you are agreeing to undertake this review it's it seems like a very general question acha kya kya hoga before i am undertaking any review acha i'll do this i'll do x y z something like that it seems very generic in that sense but it is not you have to be theoretical technical as well as practical in all of these questions so we'll Have to gradually develop that, and no matter how you, I mean, like, a book, open it, sit down. I, I'm, I'm not. I mean, in this situation, the first thing is not applicable. The first thing which I said of time constraint is not a is not going to be the constraint in this case. For part number three, for question number three, the biggest challenge will be comprehension, understanding what the question is asking out of you, which chapter to refer to, how much technicality to include, and how much practicality to include in question number three. That is the biggest challenge for one and two. i'm pretty sure anyone lab mere ko you don't even have to read through all of this based on what we have just studied in the last few minutes you'll be able to tackle part 1 and 2 it's not that difficult but yes of course you'll be under time pressure you have to manage your time very well while you're going ahead with this now uh, as we're kind of moving ahead uh, let me just quickly read up the entire question here with you uh, because you guys have done a prelim reading i'll i'll only be focusing on the major area so that you know we can understand comprehend what what the ask of the questions can be going forwards right and there'll be a lot of information so for every paragraph have a have a you know store of information uh, based on okay have a crux at the back, back of your mind okay first para is for this second para is for this third is for this fourth is for this for questions like these wherein you know you're you're provided with a lot of background information so here it says that there's a country with a population of 50 uh, million people Uh, a country with a population of 50 million people has a small town with 50000 inhab- inhabitants located on a island situated a short distance from the mainland so there's a mainland and then there's an island and uh, there's a country which has 50 million ka population not a very big country and uh, there's a small town with 50000 people inhabited on that particular island which is at a small distance from the mainland so like mainland island uh, 50 million and 50000 uh that's the difference between the two so it's a big area a lot of people small area very few people okay nothing more than that uh the only connection that the island has to the mainland is one bridge 
which is now over 50 years old. Okay, so there's only one way that you can travel from mainland to that island, which is one bridge. And that particular bridge was created over 50 years back. So it's pretty old in that sense. So I, I can get some sort of insight. They'll, they'll start talking about the bridge maintenance. I'm expecting something on those lines to definitely come because the bridge is already old. They might as well ask me to, uh, you know, uh, w- what can I do with this particular bridge? How can I raise funds? Something of those sense can potentially come because... You know, I've, I've had some background information with a lot of questions. So at the back of my mind, I'm prepared for that. But without judging, let's move forward. They say the road that connects the town on island to the mainland, it passes mainly through an important habitat for birds that has been subjected to increasing environmental protections over the over the past 50 years. And that's where the dread begins because historically you would have seen that and, and you can ask with any other seniors or something like that who have given CP1. Within CP1, the most dreaded section is usually climate change because the moment climate comes in, uh, marks, you know, it, it, it drastically uh, starts reducing because they're seeking for certain things within uh, questions like these. So now I am introduced to potentially climate because now they're saying that the road passes through an important ecologically sensitive kind of an area, which is a habitat for birds. It doesn't say ecologically sensitive, but it says that it's, it's, it's an important habitat of birds. All right. So climate change is potentially introduced uh, right now. Next thing that they're saying is a local the local government for the town recognizes that the road and bridge are a critical link between the island and mainland. And of course, for them, it's a very important thing because all their supplies, everything there, they might be super dip, uh, dependent on that particular mainland and this connectivity in order to sustain lives on this particular island. The mainland of both the road and bridge is a priority for local government. Okay. So it's a priority for local government. Just ensure that you're noting it down. It's a priority for the local government. May not necessarily be a priority for the main government of the isle of, of the mainland. But to island gear, it's a priority. They have to ensure that this road is always connected because the moment it's shut down, every supply, everything will get choked down for this particular island. So island gear, it's the number one priority maybe to ensure that this road connectivity is always active. And that's where conflict of interest is start is, is going to start popping up. Next, it says, however, the connection to mainland must always be operational. Okay. Maintenance of the bridge is typically planned at least two years in advance, considering the age of the bridge, uh, operational requirements and the local government's financial resources constraint. So now I'm introduced to the fact that I will always plan at least key, next two years. What is the maintenance to be done is going to be planned today itself. So up until May 2026, whatever repairs need to be done, I'll have to sit on a paper and ensure that everything is put out on an Excel today itself because of three main reasons. One, I have limited resources. I I'm, I, I don't have a lot of resources. So financial resources is one of the biggest constraints. Uh, the other two things are operational requirements and age of the bridge. So age of the bridge is pretty, it's pretty old, right? If I'm not planning in advance, uh, it may, and, and there, there aren't, you know, frequent maintenance, it can potentially go down, something of that sort. So these are the three things which are, uh, which which basically puts me in at, at a situation uh, wherein I have to plan at least two years in advance. All right. Next, it says occasionally there'll be a need to carry out emergency maintenance of the bridge. So despite me planning two years in advance, there can still be certain situations wherein, say, suppose if there's a pothole that gets created or there's an accident, something of that sort, I'm not sure, but there may still be some emergency uh, maintenance which may be required, which is potentially a common sense good that they have given this information uh, to me directly so that I'm aware of it and I don't have to assume anything because they've given it to me. Next they say until 10 years ago coastal sea flooding at the of the road from the town to the mainland was very rare. Now so first was just background information second paragraph it was telling me about why and how this particular channel of road is important for me as a part of that uh, local government. Next, now they're talking something about, they're now, you know, they're digressing back to potentially climate. Because now they're saying until 10 years ago, coastal sea flooding of the road from the town of the mainland, flooding of the road from the town of the mainland was very rare. So 10 years ago, coastal flooding was very rare. It barely used to happen. However, in the last 10 years, the frequency and severity of storms that cause flooding and other damage to the roads have increased. Now, frequency severity is something we'll discuss in much more depth where we are going into risk chapter. But right now, what it tells me is that the number of times the flooding happens and the damage that every flooding does today is a lot higher today as compared to what it was 10 years ago. So it again introduces me to everything that's going around climate change and all of that. Uh, But have they given me any consequence of it? Not yet. Other damage to the road. So they have said that, okay, because of this frequency and severity being higher, 
the road damages today is much higher as compared to what it was 10 years ago again plain common sense but make sure that you're connecting the dots at the same time you should also strike acha so maybe two years in a back whatever maintenance and all was required i'll have to project that going forwards because the frequency severity may keep on increasing so all the models that i built may not necessarily work out why because uh, the damages today are much higher as what it compa- uh, as compared to what it used to be 10 years back and it might keep on increasing i don't know just yet but this is again something that struck me at the back of my mind so i'm just thinking out loud everything uh, on one recent occasion a severe storm and associated coastal flooding caused damage to both the road and bridge making them unavailable for a week so up until now i had been told that you know this is super critical it is the priority of the local government to ensure that it is up and running at all points of time there cannot be any negligence on part of anyone within this because it's prime of hisia requirement now they are introducing me to this thing that because of a severe storm that came recently and there was an associated flood alongside that it caused a lot of damage to the road and to the bridge which made them unavailable for an entire week all right next they say the local government has proposed to engage an actuary to undertake a review of its and now comes the main crux because now you have to understand you are potentially going to be the actuary and what is the scope of work what is the requirement understanding all of those things need to be very uh, clear going forward so they say that the local government has proposed to engage an actuary this is the local government not the mainland government but the local government they have said that we should uh, engage an actuary to undertake the review of its transportation road and bridge link with the mainland so within that island there must be road and then the road gets connected to the isle uh, th- through the bridge to the to the mainland and they have asked actuary to undertake a review of it but what review i still don't know let's let's read more about what the scope of the review is the review will consider island's infrastructure requirements and assessment of risk for its link with the mainland over the next 50 years again let's read it back because i i i'm not sure if i comprehended everything correctly the review will consider the island's infrastructure requirements and assessment of risk for its link with the mainland for the next 50 years so for the next 50 years what will be the requirement of infrastructure for this island and what are the different risks associated with it so just at the back of your mind you should also think acha me as an actuary what are the things that i need to work on i need to identify what the requirements will be for the next 50 years and what are the risks that can potentially be as a part of it including considering climate change risk so climate change risk in itself has come as a topic over here don't worry about climate change just yet we'll look at it in much more depth what we while we are going ahead but this background information is should be available to you so that you are prepared as to what is it that you need to work on and finally the last small paragraph it says currently the local government pays maintenance cost of the road and bridge okay wait wait sorry currently the local government pays the maintenance cost for the road and bridge uh, link as and when they arise so currently they are paying on an as is basis ki acha tomorrow there is a uh, uh, something matlab pothole comes i'll pay 1 lakh rupees get it fixed that is what i understand out of it a suggestion has been made that a 20 year fixed cost maintenance contract could be set up to manage the risk and cost of maintaining the road and bridge today what happens if there is a if if this flooding comes if it is unavailable for a week if some something or the other happens i engage the people they come to me they work they give me the bill i pay them that is how it has been the proposal is that i have a 20 year fixed cost maintenance that every year i pay you an x amount right now every year if i'm paying you an x amount and you have to ensure that the bridge is up and running for the next 20 years what is the upside loss for me what is the risk that i am transferring all of those things should start and matlab you know popping at the back of your mind because now it's a fixed cost maintenance quality considerations should also be there right because say suppose if i'm asking you that you know fix this laptop for me right now you will potentially work on it you know charge me a good hefty amount of bill because it's it's a it's it's a it's a very important asset for me right now other than that if i say that you know every for the next 2 3 years you have to keep a maintenance in that case what level of effort you will provide what quality of inputs you will provide a lot of things situations changes with a fixed cost 20 year long maintenance contract versus an impromptu contract so of course i'm not sure if there's something that gets asked within this but all of these understanding should emanate the moment that you are reading about it up now if i time it it took me 13 minutes to go through it of course i was thinking out loud so it took me much longer you should ideally be able to comprehend everything 
within six to seven minutes max. That is like the epitome I'm saying. Ideally, we have to reach a position where in less than five minutes, you're able to assess and get all of this information the moment that we have read all the background information. That is our uh, uh, target going to be. And think out loud within your brain, start brainstorming. Achha, ye hai, wo start having a synopsis of every uh, uh, para. The moment that you have read it, you should be able to say, first paragraph it was talking, it was giving me some background information. Second paragraph talked about why local government is very important. Hai. Third paragraph was talking about how storms and everything has come. Fourth paragraph is talking about the scope of work for the actuary. And fifth paragraph is talking about uh, how the maintenance work has been right now and how it will change. So all of these matlab, it's, it should be able to synop provide a synopsis in less than 15 seconds once you have read it thoroughly. So the idea is not reading, idea is comprehending. Once you have done that particular work, the you know the next phase of works will start getting very easy. Now if I go to the next couple of yeah, uh, questions and we'll start tackling the questions because that's prime of AC what, what's going to give you marks. The first question says, list the stakeholders who will be a part of this transportation review. Now, can someone tell me what should be done in this question and what you should avoid doing in this particular question before achha, first, first I want to hear from you and then I'll, I'll, I'll discuss, uh, in more detail. How will you answer this? What, what will be the structure of this particular answer? List the stakeholders who will be a part of the review. It should be pretty plain and bland, but I just want to hear from you that, okay, what, what is it that we are expected to do out of this particular uh, answer? Because I've seen a lot of wrong answers coming out of this and people unnecessarily do something which is not a requirement of the question. So if this question comes, what are you supposed to do? We should answer according to the case study given. That is absolutely true. You have to answer according to the case study that is given. Specifically to this, this particular question, what will you do? Is question may up kya karoge? Can you give me three answers? Maybe three just just three points. One, two, three, whatever it is. One point is also sufficient. Just at least give a structure to the answer so that I can point out that okay, this is the right thing, this is the wrong thing. And I want you guys to learn from your mistakes. Make a mistake today, don't make a mistake in the examination. Point out 12 stakeholders for six marks at least. So that is like the base, of course, and within point out the word in itself is is absolutely important within this. The question is list the stakeholders. I'm technically not allowed to, but because I've taught, I've seen a lot of papers that came from this listing ki jage, a lot of people just because they see a six mark on table, six marks is a lot. I'll have to write like about the stakeholders and why is it important? The question does not ask you why is it important? Of course, by the time we are, you know, in, in, in the next few days, you'll definitely be much more accustomed to this. But the word list in itself basically means that you're only supposed to write down, okay, Mr. X, Mr. Y, something like that. You're just supposed to list it down. You're not supposed to explain. So the first word of the question is something that you have to pay very deep attention to. Whether it is a list, whether it is a discuss, describe, set out. Because a lot of people keep asking me, because it's a six mark, should I write 12 points? Whether you should write 12 points or whether you should write four points and explain them will be determined by the first word of that particular question and directionally what the question is asking you to do. So if I show you any, a, a couple of papers, a lot of people, what they did, they wrote six stakeholders and also wrote why those stakeholders are important. No matter how much you write about the why you will get zero. The only thing that you will be marked for in this particular six marker is to list down stakeholders and bare minimum, you have to list down 12. And I would say bare minimum meaning bare minimum is 15 because you should always have three buffer points. You never know until and unless your points match what is given in the examiner report, you will not get marks, right? So and bare minimum 15 stakeholders hone chahiye as a part of your answer. Now the problem will be that it seems very easy as a stakeholder to likhna hai. You start writing down 15 uh, uh, stakeholders and ideally you should save some time in this particular question because reading may already you have lost five, six minutes. So this six marker in a, in an ideal world, you should not take more than five minutes to tackle this and come up with at least 15 to 16 stakeholders. But trust me, it will become difficult. The moment you jot down six or seven after that, your brain will start saying, Achha, okay, what next? So that challenge is definitely going to come. I, I can, I can guarantee you that. So why don't we do this one thing? You know, directionally what the ask of the question is every one of you independently is 11, 14. Uh, keep writing down and in the next four minutes by 11, 18, whatever it is that you have written down, everyone just put a hit, hit and enter button at that particular point of time. Please, nobody is going to judge you over here. Nobody even reads anything. It's just that I want to understand what is where you are at and where we have to be. So it's 11, 15, you have three, three and a half minutes until then, whatever it is that you can write, even if it is six points, two points or 15 points, 
whatever it is just start jotting them down and start sending it across to me and then we'll discuss after that so your time starts now वन लास्ट मिनट गाइज वॉट एवर इट इज जू स्टार्ट शूटिंग आउट जितना कंप्लीट हो ओके so perfect i mean this is this is very interesting to see there is usually when i start off uh, and and historically it has been the case that you know with this question a lot of people initially make this mistake but uh, i i don't think anyone has made this mistake at least for the uh, for the time being now how do you maximize on marks when you have to write so many points right and bare minimum you have to write at least 14 15 so aapko bahut sare points likhne that is of course uh, the first consideration and within those points you have to be very careful about making sure that you are adding sufficient diversity and depth to it a lot of people what they make the, the initial mistakes let me just put it that way which sadly no none of you did uh, and and it's a bad thing that i'm using sadly but uh, it's very interesting to see that none of you made that mistake and very bad that not not every one of you tried hard enough uh list the stakeholders within this of course 15 stakeholders is a very difficult thing right a bad way to approach this question is where people write government where people write uh you know ya to population uh, ya fir residents something like that so to add that diversity you have to create the fractional you know you have to bifurcate the entire chunk and just like you guys have basically done over here the mainland residents versus local island residents these are two very different stakeholders right and of course there's a conflicting interest between the two as well so the so just whenever you're thinking about it bifurcate and dissect the answer to the maximum that you possibly can right so your 
mainland uh, residents and island residents this becomes two your mainland government and island government this becomes four actually of course is something that has been provided within this so that becomes five ye five points is something that that should come in less than like 30 seconds to you now the entire effort is in the next few minutes how can you uh, maximize on the other uh, points that you are supposed to think about now if you think about it environment pe kisi ne bataya tha so environmental you know conservation group or something like that that can become uh, another uh, uh, part of this if you look at it within question they are also talking about road infrastructure and all of that so maybe you know companies of the mainland companies of the island that can also be a part of it insurance companies of course will get affected because of all the climate uh, uh, change that is happening so that is again one thing and there will be certain points with these i would call as you know the tail ender points the tail ender points will be a part of most of the answers i am right now focusing on the specification the specific points then i think there was something about engineers over there because there is a there is a contractor there's an engineer uh, uh, which are a part of it so i think we have done seven eight and there will be certain points which can always be repeated no matter what there will be taxpayers there will be regulators uh, then there will be lawyers there will be uh, you know policy authorities all of those things so there are like three four points jo aap kahin pe bhi dal sakte ho so with that you will see that once once you are you know getting deeper into it and when you are bif- bifurcating the pointers you will start seeing that the points add a lot more value to it and at the same time you have to be prepared for question 2 as well because of the stakeholders that you identify over here you have to also talk about the potential conflict of interest between them in in part 2 right so be very careful about what you provide over here because unhi ke beech mein de dena because it specifies that you have to identify the uh, conflict of interest between the stakeholders identified in part 1 i have sadly seen an answer wherein the stakeholder was not identified but it was a part of a conflict of interest i'm not sure whether or not you will get marks for this ideally always avoid being in that situation because the question is very specific about it so don't write something over there in part 2 which is not a pa- which is not an answer of part 1 because it it it's not the ask of the question it's very different in that sense you may get marks because the examiner is like acha it's a part of the uh, you know examiner reports so i'll give you marks but ideally you should not be doing that so let's just see what are the things that you have done population mainland island that is fine local government and mainland government that gives you four easy points actually should always be there climate association group environmental risk bodies animals particularly birds okay that is in a way yes they are they are they are they are kind of there but it's it's better that we stick to uh uh you know more uh, more of technical uh, this thing taxi owners again okay that is going deep then there is local so more or less acha a lot of people are started giving answers after that all right so all in all these are the things that need to come out with that let me just quickly show you one of the answer script of an individual uh who had attempted uh, very well on on this particular paper let me just quickly show it to i usually show it at the end but i found that you know showing it towards the end doesn't really add a lot of value so i'm going to show it to you uh right now i hope you can see this right in front of you so this particular individual it was i think sec- third attempt tha individual this this particular individuals uh, initially uh, he or she had gotten 34 35 the next term was somewhere close to 50 something this term was 72 and i have practically never seen there might be individuals who are cracking that but i have never seen anyone score 72 in cp1 so 72 in cp1 in itself is a is a big achievement and the fact that it was third attempt going from 35 to practically more than doubling your marks of course meant that the uh, individual had done a lot of hard work and if you look at it this is just the first question there's there isn't the first question if you look at the word count there's a lot of rumor going around a lot of people saying that you need to have at least 6000 word count i don't even know i mean 6000 word count is is to be honest a lot the total word count of this individual was 4200 or something so you won't be marked for writing words you will be marked for writing correct words in that sense if if, if you may say so over here just look at the dissection that the that this particular candidate has done and of course uh six marks were scored on this particular question so it says local government uh local government of the town government of the office ha so local government and central government so government ka dissection ho gaya you have gotten two points then resident of the town resident of the mainland you have got an another two points so that's four next they have environmental working group conservation group in the conservation of birds so they have also dissected between birds versus the normal environmental group i'm not sure if you'll get marked for it but it's a good thought process anyways i'll at least count it as five or maybe six then actually of course is 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 a point that will definitely come that is six contractor lawyer taxpayer regulatory authority police authority these are like four or five points that you can put anywhere 
contractors in in this situation but of course lawyer taxpayer regulators regulatory authorities regulatory bodies all of these four five points you can put it anywhere for that matter so you have like six seven specific points up until now and then you have five general points you are already at 11 and of course insurance company which makes it 12 and then there is animal welfare organization engineers who are undertaking that particular project so it's like if you just think about it five six points are there that you can put anywhere actually uh, lawyer taxpayer regulator uh, police authority, insurance company, employer, something like that. These five, six points will be a part of every particular situation. And then when you're incrementally bifurcating it, local government, central government, local residents, and, uh, and uh, all the residents, 10 points to SAO. Then you're just supposed to maybe think about uh, your uh, construction company, insurance company, and all of that. And, and you're basically done with 12. And of course, you should have a few incremental points. Now, one very smart thing that was done over here for taxpayers, because it is very generic, the candidate has also given a reason why as there may be an increase in the tax fund to fund the project. Why this helps is if taxpayers is not a part of my examiner report, but still the candidate has given some bit of information about it. Me as an examiner, I'm compelled to give the give, give, you know, 1.5 for this because it makes sense. So wherever you think that, you know, we are going into too generic a point, you can, of course, add a little value by uh, giving an incremental, you know, just give them a line about it. That this is the reason why you think it is uh, relevant. Insurance company, why? Because it has decided to take. Maybe I think local police authority should have also been explained because of what it has been, because of the direction of the answer. But if you just think about it at the back of your mind, the candidate has made his or her life so easy. Che general point, che specific point, you're out of the, uh, uh, you know, you're basically out of these kind of questions. And next question, if you just look at it, just give me one second. Yes, the, uh, so list the stakeholders. These kind of questions are something that get asked. Don't think of it that it, that it doesn't come. And uh, it's not as easy as you might otherwise think of it, uh, you know. And of course, they are okay giving marks for this. Why do I say it's not easy? Because agar ab, if you, even if you're scoring five, a five out of six on this question is essentially losing out on a lot of marks. Where, matlab, you should not aim for anything less than six in this kind of a question because these are like the giveaways. If you don't maximize your marks over here, there are a lot of questions coming down. Part number three also has a lot of traps to it, wherein you are essentially going to lose out on a lot of marks. And in, in this particular situation, the candidate got six out of six in the first from both the examiners, three out of three in the second, again from both the examiners. In part three, I'll show you one examiner gave seven, which is full. The second examiner gave three, which is less than half. So that kind of, you know, Mix and match can also be a part of it, and I'm not making this up. I think I have the scorecard of this individual as well. More than happy to show that to you also. The reason why I'm showing showing all of these things to you is to ensure that you know you guys ensure these best practices are a part of your answer. Let me just quickly show you the results and just employ this within your uh, working as you're going ahead as well. Like I mentioned, I usually show it towards the end. I'm showing it, you know, beforehand to you. 6 May 6, 3 May 3. Again, just look at the good things that this candidate must have done with the hard work. 7 May, one candidate, one, one of the examiners has given 7. 9 May, one of the examiners has given 9. And 4 May, one of the examiners has given 4. So the first 5 questions, at least one examiner has given full marks. So that, and in, and I mean, in, in two of the questions, both of them have given full marks, right? So essentially, this is what you have to strive for. When you're starting your paper, chronologically, just ensure that the first few questions are so super strong that ultimately, let me tell you, the person who is shaking at the end of the day is a human being and there comes a preconceived notion. And if you are starting off very well, and if you're giving this idea that you're a very strong candidate, it of course is going to help your cause going forwards, right? So ensure that you're maximizing your scorability in these initial questions. And for this six marker, bare minimum 15 points definitely need to come out of your, uh, uh, you know, answer. And, and it's very easy if you think back about it. And ideally, this is what you should, you know, strive for and uh, uh, think about. And if you look at it, part one, question number one, which is basically your environment wala question, climate change, ask anyone Trust me, 99% of the folks are going to tell you that who have, who have appeared for CP1 or anyone, uh, they'll tell you that climate change is usually a dreaded kind of a, uh, uh, you know, uh, situation. If you look at it, the score is 6 plus 3, 9 plus 5, 14, uh, 14 plus 8, 22, 22 plus 7 is 29, 37, 37 plus 4 is 41 and 41.5. 41.5 out of 50 is no joke. 
if the candidate did the same in part 2 as well he, he or she would have scored 83 uh, part 2 was relatively poorly scored maybe because of time management but overall 72 plus in in cp1 is is absolutely something uh, which is amazing right so for that you need to ensure that these best practices are a part of your answer and we'll learn from all of these uh, mistakes and best practices of others in order to ensure that we employ the best practices and don't replicate those mistakes so let me go back to the question paper once again right <clears throat> list the stakeholders pretty easy we have understood what the key ask of the question was who the stakeholders can be the thought process is something that you have to instill 6 ho ya 10 doesn't really matter you should be able to uh, crack these kind of a questions with five six general points that you should always have and that's why i keep telling you that note making is very handy so within your notes whenever you are preparing for it you should always have ki acha ye 6 7 stakeholders hai which i can just you know just look at and write or maybe even copy paste for that matter as long as it's written in your own words so that solves the purpose for question number 1 moving on to question number 2 describe three potential conflict of interest that could arise between the stakeholders identified in part 1 so part 1 there are certain stakeholders that you have identified what can be the potential conflict of interest and conflict of interest is a very important topic in that sense understanding what the ask of the question is becomes very critical in this kind of a question so conflict of interest here be very careful they are asking describe so you have to describe three potential conflict of interest your focus has to be on what are the potential conflict of interest that could arise between the stakeholders identified in part 1 so you have to anecdotally or maybe in an example way say that between mr a and mr b which is which can be local government and central government so you can pick up the ones which are relatively more easier so i can think of okay let me just think out loud local government central government there will be a, a conflict of interest local government ke liye the priority is that particular road and the bridge infrastructure for central government that's not the priority so they might not allocate enough funds to it so that is i think one then i think tax payers and residents of the uh, of the island that is again one thing tax payers might end up feeling that you know my money should be utilized towards the mainland a significant chunk of it potentially should not go towards just building of this infrastructure while for the residents of that particular town they don't care they are like the first priority for me in my life is to of course uh, other than the basic requirements is to ensure that this road and infrastructure is up and running so for a normal tax payer who wants other infrastructures like maybe like maybe you know proper roads maybe electricity maybe your hospitals uh, 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 education centers schools for them it is something different you don't have to give all of these examples but i'm just giving you a thought process so this can be between normal tax payers and uh, uh, what do you call it uh, between um, sorry your normal tax payers versus uh, uh, this thing uh, then it can also be between the residents of the mainland versus residents of that particular uh, uh, area it can also be between actuary and the local government or maybe actuary and the residents because actuary is supposed to be absolutely uh this thing objective about his uh, objective about what he is trying to build versus the residents of the main town don't care about the actual report they are like this has to be there because this is again a uh uh means of survival for them in in that case so there are multiple individuals that you can identify it's a pretty straightforward question in that sense and given that it is asking you for example you have to just pick up a couple of points from you know both the section and identify what the uh potential conflict of interest can be yes please and i i want this interaction to be there you have asked is this a valid point construction of new road and bridge may be required which can lead to pollution and thus a conflict of interest between government's priority and protection groups yes of course uh within that government just mention local government so that you know it's it comes out in a in a better way so yes this is again a valid point there can be so many points that can come within this environmental protection group and government and let me just show you how that candidate answered as well because the candidate has gotten full marks i think it might be good to and, and don't worry i have taken candidates consent and anyways the name is not disclosed contractor ek second ha huh? yes so in this case the candidate it was asked for three the candidate has given four always a good thing if you have time i think a lot of time was saved over here uh because of the way that it has been structured uh so over here they, they have said conflict of interest in fund allocation local government and residents of the town okay conflict of interest regarding welfare of birds by wildlife conservation group and local government okay that is again valid government officials and residents of the town this kind of seems repetitive as compared to part a so good that the candidate came up with at least one more buffer point engineers undertaking the project and the government 
so engineers would want profit maximization and government would want cost minimization so that is again a valid point so i think a and c kind of seem redundant to me i haven't gone deeper government officials who want to allocate funds uh, whereas on the allocation okay this is correct the government might have allocate funds i think a and c are very repetitive in that sense so potentially it, it was a good idea on the on, on the part of candidate to ensure that a and c are you know there is a buffer point i i won't give more than i mean if this was not a part of the answer the candidate would have scored only two in in my opinion uh, being you know having that buffer point is obviously important and right now you might feel okay how stupid of it to you know have that same point come in but trust me exam may your mind doesn't work that way you're like jo aya likho fatafat uh, next you have said contractor and the local government regarding the cost absolutely right this is what the candidate has also done over here engineer which is basically the contractor who is undertaking the project and government so yes as long as you're coming up with valid points on what you have identified in part 1 and substantiating with reason that this is the reason why you know there can be a potential conflict of interest prima facie by way of an example it's more than sufficient Uh, and of course it should make sense uh, at the end of the day it cannot be like you're making something up which which doesn't really uh, you know add up so you have to ensure that adding up is also something that is a part of answers uh, uh, of this answer and answers like these so having said that let's just move on to the third question which is which is potentially why we are all sitting up over here and uh, wherein you know mistakes are potentially going to be a, a a part of the answer and 4k age is, is nothing it's it's not it's not a part of our work right now because it talks about risk mitigation of risk which is again later on model chapter 17 uh suitability of maintenance cost okay so this is uh, uh again it will be a part of your this thing uh, next uh, sorry it will be part uh, sorry maintenance cost contract i think it will be it will be from investment and then they are talking about other possible ways could fund so okay funding and all this is not a part of our requirement but what we have studied today it, it basically accounts for 1 2 and 3 now if you talk about it if i if i just do the book work you know manage of matter whatever is written out there on the book if i discuss everything still you won't be structurally aligned to be able to tackle a question like question number 3 over here everything of course is there in your book you 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 have sufficient material in order to be able to tackle this maybe i'll just quickly go through that again show you guys what the material is uh, just the synopsis of the material of course it's much more detailed out in your in your cmp but i'll just show you guys the synopsis of the material and just be very careful about what the ask of the question is over here it's very easy to not answer what the ask of the question is in in specific questions like these so be very careful in reading up the question don't answer for b when the answer is asking for a so just make sure what what it is that they're asking is absolutely crystal clear the moment you read it nahi samajh mein i read it twice thrice but ensure that your understanding of the question is absolutely correct so it says set out the factors okay i have to what i what do i have to do i have to set out the factors so set out in itself is something that i have to be clear about whether i need to write 14 bullets or 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 you know few points you have to think through and tell me and then they say <clears throat> and and don't look at it exactly one to one with the examiner report examiner report will always have bullets but that's not how you're supposed to write the answer that is just to guide the examiner to you know have an understanding of how to mark the candidates so that's not for you to understand ki acha har ek everything does not come in bullets right so be be a little careful about that so without digressing let's come back to this set out is the ask so i have to set out what do i have to set out the factors okay including any further investigations that an actually would need to consider theek hai before agreeing to undertake this review so you are the actual in this situation before you agree to undertake a lot of answers from a lot of candidates had a lot of points which were not even considering the before agreeing it was more or less i'll, I'll tell you and this mistake happens a lot in the examination you have to be very thorough about what the ask is what the question is very simple in that sense agar if if i have to think about it it is asking me what checklist would i potentially have and if all the checklists are like ticked only then i will take this particular review so what checklist mein kya kya hona chahiye what are the things what is the homework that i have to do if i may say what is the homework that i have to do at the back of you know before i start to undertake this particular review a lot of answers which i sadly cannot show you i don't uh, i i i don't want to uh i i can't actually technically they were talking about a lot of things which was post you have taken the review like as an actually i would do this as an actually i would do that that is not the ask of the question the question is very simple in that sense they are asking you what are the factors and further investigation in 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 in, in you know in in bold 
that you as an actuary would undertake before you're agreeing to undertake this review. So put yourself in the shoes of an actuary. Think that you're working right now. Okay. If your manager tomorrow asks you, say, suppose you're in life insurance, right? Just, just giving an example. Say your employer asks you, Ki ye pension scheme do its valuation. I'm, I'm not sure if that even makes sense, but let's just say this ask comes, will you be able to do that? Or let's just say they ask you, Ki achha, before the end of the day, I need a report on this. Will you be able to do that? I'm pretty sure no, right? Why? Because of a lot of reasons. You don't have domain expertise. Maybe time is insufficient. Uh, your work experience is in something which is totally different. Uh, you don't have peers with which with whom you can take help and, and, you know, get it done. So just on those lines, of course, that thought process, but not the answer. That thought process needs to be here uh, in this particular question. So you as an actuary, what are the factors that you will have to uh, include and include the in, and including some further investigations that you will do even before you are starting the work. So what are those things going to be now while we have some practical guideline as to what are the thought process going to be like, let me just introduce you to, to some technical points that should be a part of your answer because going forwards, like I've said so many times, and I'll say at least a hundred times before your examination, your answers need to be both technical and practical. Technical when I say it needs to have sufficient book work to it and practical when I'm say I'm trying to incorporate all of these practical things. Ki achha, uh, I, I should have sufficient domain knowledge. I should have sufficient background information. I should have sufficient experience. All of those things, which will definitely not be a part of your book. It's common sense. So. Uh -huh. Eight second. So let's just quickly read, read up and try to gather what will be the technical points that should be a part of it. So technicality may, uh, yeah, I hope you can see the screen. Perfect. Alternate solution, whether or not it will be applicable. I'm not sure yet. Set out and explain further implication. I'm not sure if that will be uh, a, a part of this. So possible clients wala ho gaya, conflict of interest wala thing is done. So upper thing is kind of taken care of, uh, actual advice. I don't think that is so. Yeah, over here, these are, these are a few, few important considerations that you should think of. Be aware of who the client is. That is important. Avoid any conflict of interest or at least identify all the conflict of interest and it's mitigating things. So that is one thing that you probably might want to do even before you're starting off with the work. Consider whether other professionals should be involved in giving the advice. So I think that can potentially be a part of this answer as well. And these are all technical things huh? because it's a part of your book work. So I'm just thinking out loud. I'm, I'm just giving you direction as to what are, what, what should be your thought process about it. Then they say that the IFOA refers to ethical professional best practices, uh, that are responsibility of IFOA, including actuaries code. They apply to the members of the profession, regardless of the territory of area, uh, uh, of work in which they operate. So it includes continuing professional development, professional skill training, technical actuarial standards. These are all the different tasks. Yes, up to TK. I don't think this is going to be very applicable. This part is may not be applicable, but aims may, I think I can take something from over here in the part of my answer. It says the aim of task is to ensure that users of actual information have confidence in information, transparency, uh, relevance of assumptions, completeness, comprehensibility, all of these things should be a part. The task should, uh, the task apply the work done. Okay. This is again something materiality. Something is material. Okay. That means uh, actual quality framework within this. They have said it aims to provide that reliability and usefulness of actual methods, communication of actual information and advice. I think this is again at the end of communicate or communication of your work will probably be at the end. So it is not probably relevant to me right now in my question. Next thing, what they said is technical skill of actually. Okay. This is, this is an important one. Technical skill of the actuary is something that he has to do before he starts the work. I can't assess my technical skill after I have signed an ND and I'm saying that, okay, I'll do this work. And then you're like, okay, I'm actually, you know what? I'm, I'm not uh, proficient or technical. I don't have sufficient technical skills to do this. You can't do that. So your technical skills, ethics, professionalism, professional code of conduct, uh, working environment. This is another point. Then I have being aware of who the client is. Avoiding conflict of interest, consider whether other professionals would be required for this. So these are like six, seven points from the material that I think I have to be thorough about before I undertake this particular review. So be a little careful about the words over there and you need to understand it in that way. And one more very important factor within this is to ensure that you're not writing uh, this exactly, you know, the way that, that, that I just uh, spoke to you about. 
always you have to address the questions in a way that uh, i think someone had said in the first thing only the first comment i think which was there when i had asked a particular question was we should always answer according to the case study that has been given like hitesh has mentioned so just ensure that you're not your answer should not look like a bland chat gpt answer or you know a, a very generic looking answer for that matter which is applicable to all the scenarios whenever you're reading out your answer if i change the scenario agar main scenario mein kuch change kar do if instead of road if it is a pension product or something like that your answer should not make sense if i am changing the underlying scenario the answer that you have written should not make sense if this is the case your answer is a good one if it is not the case your answer is a pathetic one and trust me right now it might look like of course if you change the scenario the 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 answer will not make sense how can it make sense trust me you write the answer to this before i probably give it it might have been even more evident you write your answers and you change the underlying situation and then you read it you will still find that okay this can still be an answer to this the reason is people end up writing so generic things uh, uh at times that you know it it doesn't make any sense at all so at certain points at certain intervals you have to link your points back to the underlying situation so uh, let me present it with an example a, a decent uh, an okay answer rather to this would be the actuary should have sufficient technical knowledge this is nowhere wrong this is absolutely right having sufficient te- technical knowledge is a pre- preliminary requirement before you are undertaking this particular review that makes sense now just assume that i am changing the entire situation instead of road it was let's just say a pension product and instead of uh, the the climate change and everything let's just change the entire scenario only but the the statement that you are making that the actuary should have sufficient background knowledge or sufficient technical knowledge is still applicable to that so ultimately what you have to do is not with all points maybe because otherwise it might look like you know you're unnecessarily spoon feeding certain points but with some points you have to include or maybe make the answers look like you have crafted it according to the underlying situation which means in this situation it can be the actuary should have sufficient background technical knowledge or domain expertise uh, within maintenance contracts something of that sort now if i change the entire premise and change it to pension and then when you read the answer it's like acha pension product hai and and actually should have uh, domain knowledge of you know uh, maintenance contracts it doesn't make sense that is a quality of a good answer and trust me most of the answers i'm i'll, I'll keep repeating this and when i take a mock you'll still give me generic answers so just you have to let's just say in the next couple of weeks months you have to have that focused effort and energy of ensuring that these bad practices get replaced by the good practices that we're just uh, uh, you know speaking about right now so that technicality needs to come and with that technicality you have to also uh, pinpoint your answer or circle back your answers to the underlying requirement of the uh, question right so just give me one second i think there's something which is mentioned within this so yeah let me just show you the examiner report to this <clears throat> yeah over here if you were to look at it what they have said is the examiners are uh, yes so the examiners set questions that look for candidates to apply principles specific to the situation set out in the question which means whatever you have learned at the background the technical things that i have that we were just talking about the examiner set question in order to ensure that the principles can be applied by the candidates candidates gain of uh, gain few marks for writing around the subject matter of the question in a more general fashion detailed specialist knowledge is not required but you know you'll get a few marks if you're writing it in a general fashion but if you're curating your answers according to the underlying requirement you'll get better marks so it says good candidates demonstrate that they have spent time in the exam on understanding the breadth of the question as on structuring uh, uh, and on the structuring of their answers planning is a big advantage is also enabled uh, to you know to have general ideas and you are you know able to craft it accordingly so this best practices that we have been discussing last day and today and maybe some part of it some best practices will be discussing in the next class as well so that you know you guys can go in that det- go in that right direction we'll discuss we'll be discussing that so that later on i don't have to talk about all of these very generic looking things now if you look at let me just 
open up that candidate's answer may not be the best in that situation because one gave three another gave seven very big deviance it's it's a part and parcel of the game but uh, let me just show you what the candidate had written and the structure and there were a few good things in the bad things i don't think seven was justified not even three it should have probably been somewhere in between ek second i think it got closed just one second guys sorry yeah <clears throat> so are here are factors to consider before undertaking the review yeah and actually would need to consider multiple factors before agreeing for the review very generic bland uh, the review may involve islands infrastructure requirements assessment of risk for its uh, mainland for the next 50 years now this is basically the two ask of the if, if you go back to the question the actually was supposed to do these two things he was supposed to identify what is the infrastructure requirement for the next 50 years and uh, cost or something there were those two things including the ha climate change so these two things which is kind of again stated back from the question itself i would say it's a decent thing to do not the best thing to do because time of course is a is of essence with this if you can add a little more value it will probably be important you can add these points as a part of this thing that the actually should have sufficient background information or technical knowledge specifically of these two things so rather than writing the review may involve you can mention that because now you are including a technical point and you are also curating your answer according to the requirement of the question so that can be your first general point now let's just look at it and what are the things that we have spoken about knowing the client is of course a very important thing knowing the client was basically uh, if i go back to our ha huh, so it said uh, be aware of who the client is so exactly that knowing the client the candidate has not written exactly the same technical words but knowing the client and within that is it, it is speaking about that actually needs to have good background uh, on the working and needs of you know this and that age of the road yeah so you have to get all the background information first which of course is a very good thing very well done next scope of the project which is again an important thing you need to understand what the scope of the project is what is the requirement and whether or not you have sufficient technical knowledge i'm not sure whether the candidate has done this that actually needs to understand the scope the requirement possible impact this is kind of similar to this thing only but what it lacks is right after that the actually should also ensure will actually be local government for us right yes the client in this case will be local government for us because we are working for the local government uh, but within knowing the client i think yes this answer is not exactly perfect we will we'll try to get a better understanding of that what what can be you know the changes to this uh knowing the client ke andar ye think i think ha it doesn't really make that bigger sense you can potentially have a better understanding but knowing the client ke jagah having background knowledge i think having background knowledge is probably a better point to write within this so you need to get sufficient background knowledge of it and knowing the client can be sufficient can be a different thing or it can be a part of your answer over here as well next thing is scope of the project the actuary needs to understand and within after all of this the actuary needs to ensure that he or she has sufficient technical and background information and background information so that he can undertake this particular review not writing this can cost you certain precious marks so 0.5 mark is unnecessarily lost because of not writing that next is cost of the project and funding level viability of the project needs to be considered now these are again a few practical points practical mein main thodi der baad aata hu time and cost of actuarial advice this should be up front so if i talk about technical time cost technicality all of these things should be up front conflict of interest should be upfront because again it is a technical point whether there is any conflict of interest you need to identify that immediately within conflict of interest you should also write about what those conflict of interest are what the mitigating factors are all of those things needs to be done before you are starting the uh, project itself whether it can be mitigated rather if not the mitigating factors but at least identifying whether or not it is possible to mitigate them cost of the project funding level data on climate change again this is something i'll come later on slightly i would say because it is data related but again it is something which is technical and at a certain point of time you will realize uh, right now i'm just giving it to you as a background knowledge just like i said ki in every question of list the stakeholders actuary lawyers government insurance company employee these and tax authorities or tax payers these five six points are very generic you can put it anywhere just like that in a lot of questions wherein wherein you know you are having difficulty of generating points 
these three things will definitely come in handy the things are model data assumptions and these are three of course three separate chapter 17 18 19 will go into depth over there but modeling data assumption can help you in any question wherein you feel that okay this looks very general i don't think i can tie it back to any other chapter that i studied agar vesa if you face that situation wherein you find it difficult tying yourself back to that particular point always use model data assumptions these are like your you know this is like a a very generic thing which is technical in that sense because it's a part of your syllabus but you can apply it to most of the questions almost all of the questions so whether you have sufficient data is something you need to be aware of before you are starting whether you can set out sufficient assumptions or whether you have sufficient technical knowledge to set out assumptions or whether you have a whether you already have a model built in that is again something that can be a part of it so right now i just want to instill it in you that because i'll be using model data assumptions in a lot of questions going forward and model data assumption doesn't come until chapter 17 18 19 and i don't want to take that up front because it's it's like a it's like a cyclical thing you have to have some background information to do well in model data and once you have better knowledge of model data it will help you in all of these questions because it's like a tool it's this is a generic tool which you can use in almost all of the questions so wherever you are facing dearth of points don't use it in every answer because that of course create a negative bias or perception about you but wherever you have a dearth of data it is a generic tool which you can use anywhere uh, at least towards the end so again this can be an important point that whether you have a proper working model already whether you have sufficient data ye sare cheeza pehle you have to do it before you start the project you can't say that okay i'll undertake the project and then you say acha mere paas to data nahi hai what do i do with it right so this is again something that you need to do uh, before uh, before you uh, undertake then if i talk about esg again we'll we'll use this as a tool later on don't want to give you too many generics right now rules regulations legislative implication is again something which is important now there are two three very important points which got missed out can you tell me like okay sir i think these two three points should definitely have been a part of the answer based on what i have shown you in the in, in the technical things two three technical points seem to be missing in this particular answer background knowledge is fine scope of project understanding the client conflict of interest all of these things are fine but there are two very important points which should definitely have been a part of this answer <clears throat> let me share the whether we require input from okay that is one very good other professional so other professionals is one ethics professionalism tas is another these two three thing these two or three matlab the way that you write it or the way that you structure it can of course create a difference you can make four points out of it as well but whether you need assistance or help from other professionals in this case the other professionals can be climate group experts that is something that you need to do before you start this particular project you can't say that you know i'll i'll, I'll get that approval later on before you sign that i'll do this project agar aapko lagta hai that you need help from those climate experts you need to ensure that you're talking to the government and saying that boss i'll need help of these five individuals how much time are they going to be able to devote to me because i'm not a climate expert i may be an expert in infrastructure but i'm not a climate expert i need their help this needs to be done before the start tas is something that needs to be done before the start professionalism is something that needs to be done before the start code of conduct and ethics is something that needs to be done before the start of the project so barring all of those things knowing the client conflict of interest uh, understanding the core requirement understanding your own technical knowledge all of these things those things should also be a part of the answer and then you can always have sufficient points to you know bulk up your answer using data esc considerations all of those things but they they should be the ending points you should not start with esg you should start with these more let's just say technical and important points to begin with so ultimately with this what i'm trying to say is that of course this is the way that we'll try to learn going forwards i don't want to just talk about this because see if i talk about ye technical terms and take an hour of it aap bhi so jaoge it it won't really help anyone's cause because it is super generic but the moment you start application of it to the answers you will find that acha these are the points that i have potentially missed out acha these are the good points that i'll uh, definitely and these are the best practices that i'll instill so that is the way i believe will be a better learning because that way you're preparing yourself for the exam as well and uh, you guys won't ultimately I, i hope rather you guys don't go at the end of the class and say that sir ne sula diya so uh, yeah that's that's kind of it from my end uh, on today's uh, session if there's any question or anything else i'm here for the next 2 3 5 minutes more than happy to uh, uh, you know Uh, uh, interact 
एंड क्या यार मतलब यू गाइज आर वेरी साइलेंट आई होप यू गाइज आर अंडरस्टैंडिंग राइट मतलब वी कैन हैव एन इंटरक्टिव सेशन एज वेल good to see that at least you guys are replying on the chat box but uh, if if you guys are reluctant to uh, speak up that is also fine any specific questions do let me know i'll i'll address those right now can we include a point with respect to client's ability to pay remuneration to the actuary yes uh it can be rather than that uh, i think wo wala ek point tha us usme the candidate had basically spoken about make sure that you are conveying your fees and everything to the uh, client that is probably a better way to address than saying that you know whether or not he can pay my fees are, are you getting the point i mean of course both are one and the same thing one thing is like you outright say that okay my fees will be one cr because now if the if, if the if the if the counterparty can't afford that they'll definitely say no rather than that saying it it's it's slightly on the negative bias tone because there you're saying whether or not the uh, and and in this case of course it's an important consideration because the answer in itself it mentioned uh, sorry the background consideration of course mentioned there were three things if i remember one was the reason why they plan it in two years in advance was a uh, constraint of resources it's a local government of 50000 inhabitants how much resources would they have so can they afford to pay the uh, uh, you know hefty fees to him is of course an important consideration but the way you write it is all, of course you know going to be important uh, as well it's the right way if you can tone it or frame it in a separate in in a slightly different tone that uh, maybe you know conveying all the fees all the uh, uh, fees and all the let's just say expenses up front is probably something that you should do before you undertake this review and yes it's a very good and practical point to include in the in the, in the answer yes any other questions any other thing that you also like you said <coughs> to prepare notes <coughs> like i Uh, when i was going through i was having difficulty in understanding which topics are more significant i should prepare notes for i would suggest in that situation uh, like i discussed and i i'm still trying to figure out a way do it question basis matlab aapko question ke hisab se if you do it it will be easier for you and question ka jo repository tha let me just quickly show you because there are a lot of new folks today uh, it it will be uploaded to your lms i'm just figuring out a a, a way and it's not of course very good looking excel but i think it will be a, it, it will be a helpful excel just one second yes so few places of course you will have certain idea about where you can prepare notes from one if there is any case study you can we can have a look at for practice to some extent like little difficult one uh, aditya will be doing that will be doing that i don't want to go through a lot of difficulty before even we are starting but don't worry by the end of our uh, by the end of you know in, in the next 2 to 1/2 whatever months we take we will definitely be in a position wherein we have done uh, or at least we have you know looked at everything so one way that i believe we can potentially create better notes is number one whatever is provided in the in in in, in you know your uh, background material in the ppts of course ensure that you you are looking because those are like the synopsis point of course but look at that and prepare it in your own words that is one thing a chunk of that not everything because it's a 300 page document i don't want you to replicate everything but a chunk of that which you find important next thing will be prepare notes for the things that have actually come into the examination so for ifoa we have done this ifoa ke liye if you look at it for every chapter at least the first few uh, uh and it's a repetition for a few but for 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 few people it might be new for every chapter basically we have dissected so for let's just say actual advice now if you want to prepare notes look at this questions there was april 2005 paper b where in this particular question came which is from actual advice then there was september 2005 where in one more question came and then there was september 2006 where in one more question came april 7 another question uh september 7 another question so the best way to prepare notes is to go through all of these questions so that you are prepared for a lot of questions you look at that and you are okay based on these questions institute is probably going in this direction these are the best checklists that i definitely need to work on and because of all of these things i think these 10 things can be the ones that for for which i can prepare notes and here i sadly cannot give you a blanket thing ki aap iske liye note prepare karo and uske liye mat karo and I I have a detailed note, but I can't sadly give it to you because if you use that note, all of everyone will fail. Uh, uh, coming under plagiarism, so you have to prepare notes in your own words. You have to identify by yourself which is a more important topic than the other ones. The best guide, the way that I did it back in my time, uh, although I was appearing from AI, uh, 
uh, was to uh, uh, give it from all of these. Like, look at as many questions as you can. Get a directional hint, an idea about what is the key ask consideration, and then prepare notes accordingly. That helped my cause, and I hope it will help yours as well. Perfect. So this Excel, I'll I'll figure out a way. If not, we'll probably give it to you on the uh, on the. What do you call it? Isko. Yeah, so it will be a part of your LMS by to today or day of today or tomorrow. In in the next one two days, it will be a part of either LMS or we'll circulate it in the group one way or the other. You'll definitely get. Uh, yeah. Should IFOA students read IA papers? Not right now. Uh, but later on, some questions I would say yes. And like I discussed in the last class as well, all the questions. Which you have in the past may not be super relevant for you because historically a lot of book work used to be asked. So next here, uh, external environment create grand list. A lot of questions you will find historically external environments used to come directly. I mean, abhi to of course we don't know entirely. Just say yahan pe. If you look at this, there's this question for eight mark. What are the effects? What are the external environment thing? A lot of direct questions used to be asked. Again, a nine marker. What are the factors? Very direct question. Again, another sixteen marks. Okay. Which is interesting. Again, asking you all of this. These kind of questions, sadly, are no longer going to come because you have a book right in because you have book right in front of you, and there are certain points. So you can't expect them to give you a question, you know, wherein you are just supposed to copy paste and write it in your own words. It will be more analytical in that sense. So a lot of these questions may not necessarily be applicable to you, and you have to identify for yourself. Yeah, okay, this is plain book work. Hai. I'm not saying neglect that. Maybe look at that once. or twice but don't spend too much time effort energy towards something like that understanding is more important than mugging up or i or or all of that so pehle ke liye isliye if you look at all of these materials they have a lot of um, mnemonics as well which will probably help iai folks because iai folks are also here and i need to take care of them there are a lot of mnemonics to help you memorize as well because some memorization is probably required in iai uh, but ifoa me you you can't really expect a direct question like this to come Right, so I I K few questions are important. I think last couple of terms I I has asked very good. Fifty percent of the question has been very good, uh, similar to what I F O A does, where understanding is more important, marking up not, uh, not so. So we'll we'll look at that. Don't worry, and uh, at least I F O A with all the questions will be covered. You don't have to worry about that. I I K be important questions will be taken care of by the by by the end of, uh, you know, reaching that conclusionary points. So that's it, guys, from my end. do read up question chapter number 0 and chapter number 1 entirely thoroughly if there is anything that you don't understand come back to me once you have this excel look at all of these questions if you have any doubts on any questions uh, post it out or you know we'll discuss it on the next class as well but ensure that as and when we are moving ahead with this you are also moving ahead with the syllabus going forward like i said sometime in this particular week we will give you the particular set of document which will have some pre work to be done which you have to read and come in the exam uh, read and come in the class and then there will be certain post work which you have to do after the class is done because then we believe you'll be prepared to be able to tackle questions like that and if we go this way rather than covering chapters if you are covering all the questions uh, uh from 2005 to to matlab 20 saal ka agar sara question we are able to comprehend we'll be in a much better position uh, before we sit for the exam so that's that's like the game plan for all of us and if required we'll take more 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 sessions than uh, right now but every day 10:30 to 12 is definitely fixed and if at all required there might be a few more sessions That's it, guys. From my end, any other questions? Sir, are we having ten uh, thirty to twelve even classes even uh, in week or no, no, not not weekdays. Ten thirty to twelve on weekends is for sure. Weekdays might be slightly different. I mean, weekdays that time so definitely won't work for me. If at mm -hmm. all we have to take on weekday, it'll probably be sometime in the morning. But uh, we have. Kind of not gotten, I mean, a very good response to that because a lot of people are working professionals as well. Uh, so it it becomes slightly, you know, daunting in that sense. Uh, but anyways, we'll be definitely be ten thirty to twelve. Yeah, twelve or twelve thirty, we can do. That's not a problem. But I want to keep the class crisp to the point. And uh, you know, uh, once we start this pre work post work thing, in that case, we can have some post work classes as well, wherein we can discuss the questions and important questions going forward. So if required, we can have maybe you know a session right now, and maybe one session at four o'clock, five o'clock, something like that, so that. Uh, uh all of us are at pace don't worry about it we'll definitely cover the entire syllabus uh before may and june july end of july will at least be 80 to 90% of the syllabus done 
and when i talk about syllabus i'm not just talking about the book work the material or you know just the book question i'm also talking about the questions from the last 20 years so all of that while we are covering i think we should be in a good position if by the first uh, week of august we are like done with the entire syllabus that's that's like the plan right now and if required we can obviously speed things up okay sir thank you perfect guys thanks a lot uh, take care have a very nice week uh, going forward do read up as well and right now i'm not going to put a lot on uh, a lot of uh, uh, this thing uh, pressure on you I'll, there there will be a time maybe one month one and a half months from now i'll i'll, I'll put a lot of pressure going forwards uh, take it light for now get to pace get a proper understanding of what the question is what the ask is and it's more about building that framework at the back of your mind ki acha ye ye question hai ye ye trap hai you're you're in a position wherein you know that this question okay i'll i'll refer back to this chapter this question has these three traps and this is how i'm going to tackle these questions if that is done cp1 is basically done so that is how we'll will will be progressing with this and if you have any feedback any uh, any any you know any concerns any questions always here to help you know the best way that i can perfect guys so take care don't want to take any much any any more of your sunday and uh, have a have a very nice weekend have a have a, have, a, have a very nice week ahead i'll see you guys over the next week you will be given this excel you will be given some pre work for the next class chalo guys see you bye thank you <coughs> thank you sir thank you bye sir wo pre work kahan aata hai pre work aapko upload karke i'll, I'll uh, we're still working on that most likely it is going to be on the lms itself uh, jahan pe upload hota rahega uh, as and when time comes so that 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 will be done and you guys will be updated don't worry one way or the other if required initially we'll also update you on whatsapp Uh, but be active on lms wahan pe probably will 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 upload it going forward okay okay thank you sir all right just read up on that so that initially jo maine 10 minutes question mein waste kiya instead of 10 minutes that can be 5 or maybe 2 and you guys also you know better prepared for you know what is to come in in the class mm-hmm. it it's not really more than 30 minutes of work 30 to my max bottom 30 me to you'll be able to write answers also okay okay sir <clears throat> all right guys perfect take care thanks a lot and uh, bye i'll see you guys next weekend